Hey Shane, this is Brian Foote here. So here's the horn. Olds recording. Copper bell. And uh, in the industry they call this a virgin bell. What they mean by virgin bell is that there's never been any horrible accidents or creases that had to be ironed out. The bell is got a couple tiny little, you know, mute dings in it, but other than that it's a virgin bell as they say. It's not been crinkled or crumpled or Trude in any way. Um, bell bead is a nice medium bead. Beautiful engraving. Olds recording. Uh, the lacquer I'd say is about 95%. Um, there's a couple little spots of rot on the tuning slide. Uh, what you could do is you could either have a patch put over it or just keep the horn clean. If you if you clean it at least once a month or once every other month, those little spots won't get any worse. Just run a run a, uh, a squeegee or a uh, not a squeegee. Run a, a brush through the lead pipe once a week. Those little spots won't get any worse. But there's a couple little spots, like four or five little spots on the tuning slide on the uh, lead on the tuning slide. Lead pipe is nickel silver. Lead pipe is perfect. Has no rot. Receivers in good shape. Uh, the horn is balanced action. As you can see, the valve block is in the middle, and it's got that classic recording trait, the, the recording valve block. These valves are offset. Um, the second valve is maybe an eighth of an inch higher, and as you can see with the fingers, it lines up perfectly. That's how your fingers are supposed to be when they're on the valve block. Um, it feels very ergonomic. Now the one thing I've also seen, uh, like an example of a different valve, another different valve design is the Selmer Radial, which is not this horn. The Selmer Radial actually has its valve block where the first valve is tilted like two degrees this way, the second valve is straight, third valve is tilted like two degrees the other way. What I would like to see is a manufacturer make them, make the valves offset and canted or tilted. That would be cool. That'd be the most ergonomic possible, but they haven't done yet, that yet. I wonder why. Um, nice little finger hook uh, in, in nickel silver. The valve is in three, three colors. It's in uh, lacquer, just gold lacquer, nickel, and copper. The valve block is a two-piece valve block. There's the serial number. Let me... 618-042. Six one eight zero four two. I don't know if you can read that. And uh, the most important part, not just how it looks, but how it plays. This recording plays extremely well. I've played two or three other ones. I've tried two or three other ones. This is the best one I've played. This is a Fullerton model. Uh, I believe it's from the 60s, but I haven't checked up on the serial number. Um, the first mouthpiece I'm going to be using is this Pro Brass, Pro Brass 7CR. And these are based on the Giardinelli sizing, but they're optimized and the mass is a little bit lighter and more equally di distributed. So this is a lead mouthpiece with a 28 throat and a very wide, comfy cushion rim. Uh, let's see how it plays. As you, can, as you can hear, it's got a huge sound and I'm more of a lead style equipment player so this mouthpiece might be fuller and thicker than the other two in terms of harmonics. Um, I'm going to use three different mouthpieces. This is just the, the first test. So I'll be exploring the horn's upper register on this test. So as you can hear, double G is fine, uh, double F sharp is fine. Let's see if I can get out an, an A flat. Yep, it does an A flat just fine. That's the very top of my range. I can't play a single note higher than that. Yep, play is extremely easy in the upper register. 
Okay, so now that my, the blood's coming back in my brain, let's uh, try this Holton 66. This is a Frank Holton mouthpiece. From the 50s and 60s, Holton was making these mouthpieces. Very attractive blank. These are some of my favorite mouthpieces ever made. They're just sexy as hell. Beautiful mouthpieces. And this is the 66, which is pretty much the middle of the road Holton mouthpiece. So it's got a 26 throat with a wide entrance, C cup, very soft rim, soft and supple rim, and this wonderful kind of chess piece kind of shape. Now I'm not going to be able to play a double A flat on this mouthpiece. This is a very different style of mouthpiece. Um, this is more for like general all around work and not playing higher than like maybe a D ever. Uh, a, a high D would be as high as I would want to play on this mouthpiece. This is more of an all purpose setup. <laughs> So it gets a very nice, warm, robust sound with uh, a C-cup mouthpiece. And now, what you wanted to check out most, the Monet. This is a Monet Prana. If you can also see, it says 17 down there at the bottom. Let me see if that. Let me see if I can zoom in on that. See if we can get that 17 in there. Yeah, it's a 17. So this is a Monet Prana B4S 17. Gold plate. Uh, the rim is sh is uh, shiny gold plate. The body of the mouthpiece is in satin scratch gold plate. Um, just a little bit of wear for from the receiver, but not. It's not as it it's barely even gone through the gold plating, so it's still in very good shape. A couple tiny little dings on the rim. Big throat. This mouthpiece has an enormous sound, enormous sound, big back bore, uh, comes to a medium small terminus end that's not necessarily sharp but that's pretty small there so it flares out quite a bit. Um, so let me try this mouthpiece. This is not a mouthpiece that's made for high register work, this is a mouthpiece that's made for a beautiful rich dark uh, small group jazz and uh, symphonic sound. Uh, you should probably put your tuning slide in a bit from like your standard, uh, f from your Bach 5B if you're playing on this mouthpiece. <laughs> Since you're doing some racetrack work, uh, this mouthpiece would be very good for playing uh, unamplified in the racetrack.
so this thing can get super loud. Yeah.